Chapter 2. Home at last. Now what do we do? Love is not enough, but it sure helps. The Sheldon Cop. October 9, 1990, the day that I'd been longing for and fantasizing about was finally here. Our little Honda Civic was again packed to the roof. Only this time, there was an infant strapped into a car seat inside the car. I squeezed into the back seat where I could observe Evan's sleeping face and watch for any color changes in his face or fingernail beds, changes in his breathing or other signs of distress during the short trip home. Well, so we're going to continue um, from the last video. The yeah. last video was primarily in September. We're going to go into October when he comes home. Yeah, he had spent... Three weeks in the NICU up at Eastern Maine, Madden, Bangor, and then almost two weeks at uh, Seton Hospital in Waterville, Maine, just so that um, local doc could get a baseline on him and we could get comfortable with providing care before we brought him home. Well, um, what were the things that you needed to prepare to bring him home? Oh, we had to kind of turn the house into a mini hospital suite, a uh, feeding pump, and all the supplies to go with it. Um, portable suction machine, which has been a standard staple of Evan's life for 31 years. Uh, all those supplies that go with it, heart and oxygen monitor, um, portable O2 if we needed it. We really basically turned it into a little, a, the house into a mini hospital. Wow. Yeah. You mentioned on the last video about the difficulty of placing his feeding tube? Oh, gosh, yes. That's awful. Can you explain more into detail how hard that is? Yeah. Um, people may have seen pictures of, like, especially preemies that have a little tube going into their, their mouth, tucked in the corner. Well, every feeding, Jonathan or I had to pass that tube into his mouth, down his throat, and into, down into his stomach. And because Evan had reflux so bad, you couldn't leave it there after every feeding. You had to remove it because it acted like a wick, and it would, it would give the um, his feeding sort of a, a, a straight route up out of his stomach and esophagus and into his lungs. And Evan ended up getting um, aspiration pneumonia while in the NICU. That's when they realized he had the, the reflux, and he came home on uh, stomach meds. So, yeah, my cat Jesse at that time he was a big black kitty with double paws. I love that cat. I miss that cat to this day, and he's been gone 26 years. We would have to lay Evan on a firm surface and insert the feeding tube. And uh, Jess, it was often on our couch. Our couch had really firm cushions. And Jesse would get up on the back, put his paws down, and stay with me until I did it. This is also the same kitty that um, if I didn't get up fast enough for Evan in the night, he would come and get me and pick, 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 pick at my side of the bed and kind of poop, poop, poop. You know how a mother cat will call her kittens to come to yeah. her? And he had run down the hall heading for Evan's room. And if I didn't go fast enough, he'd come back and get me, try to wrangle me to get me to go to Evan. Um, that cat was, was amazing. He was pure comfort for me. Especially when I was home alone all day with Evan once John went back to work and I was still on an extended maternity leave. So you mentioned about um, the stresses of um, the, when you were about to leave the hospital and the, the just the weight on your shoulders of what was needed to uh, be his mother and also be his medical provider. Yeah. What was a typical day like with you and Evan? A um, typical day would revolve around his feeding. So with, with m most newborns and, or infants, their days do revolve around their feeding times. I discovered that when our, my younger son Ian was born as well. But with Evan, it wasn't easy because I was still expressing breast milk and had to fit that in and prepare feeding bags because we'd put it the food into a um, a bag, feeding bag, and hang it and attach it to a Kanga pump so that it went in at a very slow rate and I had my hands free for other things. And that took prep time, so it took getting Evan 
Evan changed and comfortable and then we tried to bottle feed him a little bit and we had mixed the breast milk with uh, baby rice to thicken it a little bit. We tried and tried probably for about three or four weeks after we brought him home and then finally decided when he got aspiration pneumonia to just, to just stop doing that because it wasn't working. Um, so we spent a lot of time, um, I think I'd mentioned before, Evan had to be held upright when he was fed because of the reflux and then we had to hold him for a good hour after. So we spent a lot of time in the rocking chair and um, I rediscovered a lot of childhood favorite books of mine. Um, Beverly Cleary books, the Roald Dahl books, as I mentioned before, the Laura Ingalls Wilder books. And in addition to reading baby books to him, we read chapter books. And, uh, Charlotte Webb, Charlotte's Web was another, Stuart Little, and Trumpet of the Swan. And those were all books that I loved as, as a child, and they brought me comfort. So I gravitated to them, and I shared them with Evan. Uh, we also, uh, music played constantly, uh, round the clock in our house when he was little to try and stimulate him but also again comfort I was really out of my comfort zone I'm someone who can't deal with getting a blood test myself and having to do medical related things to Evan has been it's been a real learning experience for me yep nice yeah you'll hear uh, James Taylor in the background here played James Taylor a lot when Evan was a new baby. Um, Sweet Baby James is my very favorite, but did his greatest hits a lot. And we just put it on repeat um, to just keep it going. If I didn't have James Taylor on, I had Cat Stevens. And um, Neil Diamond was another one. And of course, the classical music. But then I also started branching out a little bit. I, I listened to a lot of, uh, Wilson Phillips was really big the summer of 1990. I listened to them constantly. And I played them a lot for Evan as well. So, tried to do the comfort music for myself, but as well as stuff, the new stuff that I enjoyed, because that gave me my link to being at the college. I was not working at this time. I was home with Evan. I was on an extended medical leave, and I missed the normalcy of being at the college and meeting the new students and seeing my favorite students and working with them. You mentioned a um, poem that you have in the book. Yeah. Night Duty. Night Duty. And as you read, I'll show uh, a few pictures of him when he first came home. Sure. His, okay. his first holidays, I think, is that section of his, uh, okay. we'll his uh, scrapbook. Night Duty. We were seated together, my boy nestled snugly on my lap in our favorite chair. Soft lamplight shone on the pages of our book, casting our combined shadow on the wall. The house was quiet except for the crickets out in the grass and the occasional late night driver going by. In our PJs and wrapped in a soft brown pearl blanket, we read a few chapters in the book we've been working on. Although these, although these late nights leave me feeling worn, they are precious times just the same. Sharing our love of reading and love of each other makes our late nights together extra special. It's interesting that we're doing this now because uh, we're very short-handed on nurses at the moment. And I've been doing a lot of night shifts with Evan. And uh, we've sort of branched out into watching favorites and kind of binge-watching things on TV instead of reading chapters of books. Like Downton Abbey, Be Discovered Together some old favorite movies like Mr. Mom and um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. We did that this weekend. So, you know, I just really try to keep Evan engaged and try to make life as interesting for him as I can, as well as as com comfortable and comforting. 31 years. Yep. It's been a ride. Oof. Yes. Yes. This boy is tired. That's an awful <laughs> big sigh out of a boy. Thank you, Deb. You're and we'll continue to go on from here on our next video, and you'll delve more into his next phase of his life. Yeah, yeah. I think um, this may help other parents feel a little less alone. Also, let the folks know what is entailed in, in, in raising uh, a child with special needs at home. I've always, I. 
from the day he was born, I said, he's living at home, I'm taking care of him at home, and I'm going to do it until the absolute very end, no matter, no matter how tired and old I become, I'm going to do it. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Bye, guys. See ya.